We are playing the Steamroller 2017 scenario number 7, Outlast. This scenario does not have kill box and has two 12 inch circular zones. If you control a zone, you get one control point. If you dominate a zone, you get two control points. The first of five control points wins the game, or via caster assassination. The Signoran force is being led by Captain Alistair Kane. His battle group is Ace and two Hunters. There are two Arcane Tempest Riflemen, a Gun Mage Captain Adept, Eris One, Terran de Lorvisi, a full unit of Trencher Infantry, a unit of Rangers, and Captain Maxwell Finn. That is 75 points of Signar. Oh, and last but certainly not least, a Squire. The Kadoran force is being led by Lord Kozlov, Viscount of Skarsgård, and his battle group is the Behemoth and a Juggernaut. Attached to Kozlov, a not part of the battle group, is the Mighty War Dog. There is a full unit of Manowar Demolition Corps with a proxy Manowar Hopnik. There is a minimum unit of Battle Mechanics, a unit of Widowmaker Scouts with Kel Baylock and the Widowmaker Marksman, a Gobber Tinker, a full unit of Manowar Shock Troopers, and a second Manowar Hopnik. And that is 75 points of Kador. We roll off the Seagulls first with Signar rolling a 3 and Kador rolling a 4, winning the roll off and decides to go first. Kador deploys in an off center, but Kozov is dead center of the table with the Man of Wars to his right, the mechanics behind the Shock Troopers, and the Kovnings next to the relative units. With the Jacks to Kozlov's left, that way, with chosen ground, they can walk through that forest without a problem. Tinker's behind Behemoth, and War Dog is behind Kozlov. And here's how Kator is deployed relative to the entire table. Signar did their advanced deployment and their normal deployment, so if you're confused as to why the trenchers are on the table right now, you now you know why. So Kane is sent to the table with the Terran, the Gun Mage Captain Adept, and the two riflemen on Kane's right, with hunt with one hunter to his left, Ace to his left, a hunter on a hill, and Eris one on the hill, as well as the Rangers in the forest on Kane's far left. Here's how Signar has deployed relative to the entire table. The Gadoran Sniper Corps is advanced deployed in front of the Juggernaut and Behemoth on Kozov's left, looking directly at that forest, so they can get their nice prowl on Kel Baylock, and also the extra defense as needed. The Trenchers begin the game dug in. Kador, turn one. Kozov gets all six of his focus, and Behemoth and the Juggernaut power up. Kozlov allocates no additional focus. He activates first and casts Chosen Ground on himself, which gives all models in his battle group Steady and Pathfinder, Tactical Supremacy on the Shock Troopers, giving him Reposition 3, and he holds on to the rest of his focus and issues a charge at one of the Signoran models. He's specifically charging one of the trenchers just to get up, and there he goes. And that ends his activation. Behemoth activates first and runs. Since he has Pathfinder from Chosen Ground, he does not mind going into that forest at all. Then the Widowmakers activate and then they run into said forest. While staying three inches away from the edge of the forest, that way they can't be seen immediately. Yay for Mark 3 pre measuring. Then Kel Baylock goes and he runs. That way he's inside the forest to get that nifty prowl. And the Widowmaker Marksman then activates and he's, he runs. And since he has stealth natively, he doesn't really mind much his positioning. Then we have the Juggernaut activating and running as well. 
also going to that forest. The man or Kovnik activates, and he turns to face the shock troopers, and he does desperate pace on them, which allows them to run 10 inches. Then the proxied Manowar Kovnik, I bought a second one after this video by the way, then puts Desperate Pace onto the Shock Troopers. And the Wardog, the best three points in Kador, not one now, runs to be next to Kozlov, the Goblin Taker runs to be behind Behemoth, and then the Battle Mechanics run to be base to base with the Shock Troopers. And then finally, the Manowar Demo Core activate and run behind the shock troopers. Signar, turn one. Ace and both hunters power up, with Kane getting all six focus and allocating none. The rangers activate first, and the unit leader runs all the way out of formation from the rest of the unit. However, since she's in formation with herself, she is providing marked target to the shock troopers in front of her. The rest of the ranger unit runs to be inside of the forest, procking their prowl. Then, Captain Maxwell Finn activates, and he simply advances inside of the forest. And he takes a shot at one of the shock troopers, and is out of range by about an inch. Then Kane activates, and advances. He casts for two focus his new up spell, Bullet Dodger! on himself, giving him plus two defense and dodge. And for another two focus, cast heightened reflexes on the trenchers, making them immune to stationary and knockdown. Said trenchers then activate, and they advance. Will they be shooting, or will they be popping smoke? It's quite annoying for them to pop smoke, because there's so many in this unit. Also really good now in Mark III, especially with, height with heightened reflexes on them. So, one trencher decides to take a shot at a shock trooper. He is in range. He is now right eight thanks to Mark Target, and he hits. He is dice off six on this damage, and does two points to him. So there's our damage dial right there. Then we have another trencher taking a shot at the same target. He hits. We measure range off camera, and he does no damage. Then we have another trencher checking range, and he declares a shot and hits, and does four points to that shock trooper. Another one takes a shot at a different shock trooper, spreading that damage around. He's barely in range, and he hits, and does one point of damage to him. Then they dig in. Then the hunter activates. Oh, that's right, the, so the trenchers did the cautious advance order. That's why they were able to shoot and dig in. So the hunters, one, that hunter activated, is shooting at a shock trooper, probably the one that's most wounded, and boosts damage and kills him outright. Then the second hunter walks, and he's that's where he's walking. Then he's going to take a shot at the shock trooper that took one point of damage, and he is in range. He hits. And he boosts damage. And that should kill him outright, which it does. So then the Gun Mage Captain Adept activates, and he walks to be on top of that hill. So look at this shooting at Widowmakers kill, and Kill Baylock. And also the Widowmaker Marksman. He is in range, and he shoots twice with two bullet types with flare and brutal damage, and misses. So then Ace walks up. He's actually running, sorry, not, not walking. Then the Arcane Tempest Rifleman run up to be on the hill. Turn to the VC, runs to be behind the trenchers. And the Squire wants to keep up with Kane, with Eris running behind this rock. Here's how the table looks at the end of round one. Two shock troopers have died. There's been some damage to done from trench trencher military rifles. However, the Kordorans are mighty close, especially since this is Kozlov. Kador, turn two. Kozlov gets all six of his focus. And 
Grand Behemoth and the Juggernaut power up. He then upkeeps Chosen Ground and Tactical Supremacy. And allocates one to Behemoth. Then the Widowmaker Marksman activates, aims, and takes a shot right back at the Gun Mage Captain Dead. He misses this shot though. Then Kale Baylock. We check his line of sight out of the forest to determine what he's able to see. And then we check on that line to see how how many riflemen he can see. And we determine that he can only see one of them. So, he's still gonna aim, and he's gonna fire at that one rifleman that he has line of sight to, and he's in range. And he hits him without a problem, and kills him outright. And he's done. Then the Widowmakers activate with two of them aiming, and the other two moving to clear out that ranger. So, one of the Widowmakers fires at the ranger. However, he misses. Capitan goes, shoots at her. Show that lovely grunt how it's done. But she misses too. She needs a demotion. Then one of the aiming Widowmakers fires and hits the rifleman, the second rifleman, and kills him outright as well. Then he makes a Swift Hunter move closer. That's how good Ordens do it. Then the last one maker takes a shot. Well, we were checking Forest Line of Sight first since we can do that. And we determined that he does have Line of Sight to the Gun Mage Captain Adept. So he takes that shot. He hits and does only three points of damage to him. So then Kozlov goes and he pops his feet on Rush, which gives plus two speed and unyielding to models currently within his control area. And because it says currently within, I place down a proxy base. So he is able to lead, walk away and you measure for the feet at that point in time where he used it. This is kind of important since he becomes speed 8, and also, we didn't play it the, the way in this game, if models leave his control area at that moment, they still have unyielding because they gain the rule. I was playing it as though they had to be while within. So I'm measuring here to see if which Man or Kovniks are in range of the feet, so I determined that the non-proxy one is in range, and is going to have he is going to take an axe cannon shot at the ranger and hits and kills her. Then the second one walks up and puts desperate pace up onto the shock troopers. Then Behemoth goes and he is now speed six thanks to defeat. Feels very nice to have speed six jacks. Once are normally of course and he takes a bombard shot at the hunter that's towing the force, and he is in range. And he spends one focus to gain powerful shot, which fully boosts his attack and damage rolls, and he hits this shot. And we determine who is in blast, that's Ace and Captain Maxwell Finn, and also the trencher, but he's dug in so he doesn't take blast damage. So this is the damage roll on the hunter, dealing nine points to the three. Quite a good roll. Then we have blast damage on Ace. And he takes four points to the floor. Not bad for a blast damage roll. Being how seven of armor 15 model. It's free damage, I'll take it. And we have blast damage on Captain Maxwell Finn. And he takes five points of damage. However, he's a hardy solo. Has three boxes left. Then the second shot is gonna be on the Squire in range, thanks to pre measurements. He spends that last focus for a powerful shot. He hits the Squire. And uh oh, what's that? Kane is in blast damage. So this is the damage roll on the Squire, who promptly dies, explodes. Then we have blast damage on Kane, who takes five points of damage, four points. 
which he promptly negates with the focus that he has on him. Then the mecha battle mechanics activates, looking to repair the gigantic steam-powered power armor suits that are in front of him. And they're just shimming around. That way they can provide some space to the Democore behind them. And then this one mechanic is going to start fixing. So they now automatically pass their repair checks and repair D3. So that heals two. And the one behind the same shock trooper heals two more. And he is fully online. So the shock troopers go and they issue the charge order. So the first one charges at that trencher. And the proxy base is where he's going. And these guys are speed eight. Thanks to feet, well, speed six with plus two inches of movement, so they're charging 11 inches quite fast for these gigantic power armor. So then one of them is charging in on Maxwell Finn, and the last one is charging his same trencher. And he gets in there. So now, it, this charge attack hits, causes a tough check, which he fails. Then this shock trooper is swinging on the hunter. But he misses, rolling a three. So then the last shock trooper swings on Captain Max Olfin and he hits and causes a tough check, which he passes. So he is knocked down. And then, since they have tactical supremacy, they reposition three inches. Reposition ha occurs at the end of the activation, so you can cycle this spell around, which is really, really cool. And so their idea here is to engage as many models as possible. That way they can keep their unyielding and also be jamming. But remember, I did not play this game assuming that they have unyielding when they leave the control area. So then the Demacore go and they run. Also looking to engage as many models as possible. Yeah, I'm using Man of War as jammers. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So, kind of not how they're supposed to work. But hey, I think they, they can stick around since they have a yielding, so let's see how that goes. Then, I'm running to engage, try to engage as many rangers as possible there. So then the Juggernaut activates the Extreme Juggernaut, and he runs 12 inches, so he is better positioned to, for future turns. Goblin Tigger then runs, staying outside of 4 inches of the Juggernaut, that way he's not killed with a trick shot. Signar, turn 2. Both Hunters and Ace power up, and Kane keeps Bullet Dodger in play, spending one focus and is wondering whether or not to do so the same with heightened reflexes. But then he decides to do so, so that's the two focus he spent. Then Captain Maxwell Finn activates and sacrifices his movement to stand up, and he takes a swing at the shock trooper that's right in front of him. He hits him and leaves him with one box left, so he doesn't get that nice killing spree move and attack that he was wanting to do so much. So then the captain, uh, gonna be Captain Adept, aims and fires at the Widowmaker Marksman. They, since they've been shooting at each other all game, they're still in range of each other. So he hits after firing two shots, well, two shot type, so it's snipe and brutal damage. So that kills the Marksman without a problem, ending that duel. Arison activates and advances. She was hiding behind the rock, so I honestly forgot about her. And she's looking at Kozlov. So we're, we check the forest line of sight, and Kozlov can be seen by Eris. So she is definitely in range, and we just be 100% sure using a laser. And she hits him, firing a disruptor bolt. So that removes all of the focus that he has, and he is disrupted, so he no, doesn't get focus next turn and he takes one box of damage. Then Kane activates and advances. He's looking to do some shooting, and he pops feet, giving him plus one to 
plus one to damage on every subsequent hit that he does with the Spellstorm pistols. So he's shooting Black Penny at one of the Shock Troopers and does not do any damage. So then he takes a second shot at the same Shock Trooper and hits. And he should do some damage to this Shock Trooper. And he's now power 13, so this dealt four boxes to him. So now he's at plus three. So he buys an attack. Sorry, plus two. Hits, does more damage, killing him. So then he buys another shot at the Shock Trooper that has one box left and hits. Of course, these shots are all Black Penny and kills him. And there's a field promotion in play with that last Shock Trooper. So then Kane buys an attack and shoots at the last Shock Trooper, hitting him, of course, since he not snakes to hit. And that deals three, deals three points of damage to him, and with he buys his last shot at the same shock trooper. Hits him. And kills him outright without a problem. So then the rangers activate in the back away, so there's a free strike for one of the demo core. However, he misses. So now the rangers are going to start shooting. So this first one hits and deals one point of damage to him. Then another shot at the same demo core hits and does uh, four points to him, so he's out in three. Then another shot from another ranger, hits, and does one more point, so he's he's being plinked away. This shot hits again, and that should kill him without a problem. Oh, he's got one box left, wow. Then the last shot definitely hits for sure, and does no damage. So then we have the unit leader then firing, and she hits because he's defense 10 with marked target, and that de definitely kills him, rolling box cars for damage. Then the hunter activates, and it's shooting at a demo core, it's aiming, and hits, and boosts damage, killing him without a problem. So there's now two demo core left, and I'm getting kind of concerned here, because I threw most of my army. So then this demo core is, we're checking for mark target for the hunter, the second hunter that's shooting. So he hits without a problem and boosts damage. And that does four boxes to him. Sorry, two boxes because of unyielding. So then we have Terran de VC go and she's aiming and she hits and she's doing brutal damage as well. And we're doing the math here for this. So that leaves him with one box left. Then her second shot hits. Also firing brutal damage, and that kills him without a problem. With one more field promotion. So then Ace goes, and he is aiming. And he also pops his mini feet, giving himself and Kane stealth. So Ace is going to shoot at one of the Widowmakers, who is not completely within the forest, so he hits him, and he's doing trick shot to go to the Capitan, and since it's a power 10, they both die. Just like that. And then there's a few promotion, and I drop the model for the Capitan, the Capitan. And then it'll properly place. And then the trenchers do their mini feats, where they pop clouds and they charge. So they pop their clouds first, which results into a huge cloud wall. So this charge is going, then this charge is going. And then one more charge here. And there's the clouds that we're now putting down because uh, we just, we're just guessing where they are, but the, the, the idea is giant wall of clouds so I can't shoot back. So he's placing them all down first, that way we know their exact placement, even though there's nothing I can do about these clouds. Besides running in there, and he ran out of clouds, so these are some of my own rings here. 
So now more charges go. So th this trencher is going after a Widowmaker. Then another trench is going after the same Widowmaker. Oh, and these are assaults, by the way. I know I'm, I said charges earlier, but these are assaults. So there's going to be a lot more attacks going out. Then we have another assault at a Demo Core. One of the remaining few. One more assault at a Demo Core, and he doesn't get the charge bonus since he didn't move three inches. And we have another assault going in on the same Demo Core. He's checking to see if he gets that charge bonus, which he should. And the clouds are also in the way. So then we have more assault shots going. And then some guys that are just running, like this uh, unit leader here. So then we have an assault shot going, which hits and does no damage. Another assault shot hits. Does no, one point of damage. Actually, no, because of the yielding, so no damage there. Then this shot hits. Then this assault shot hits. And does either one point? Yeah, one point. Then this shot misses. Then another assault shot hits. And does no damage. Then another assault shot hits. There's a couple points, I want to say two or three. It does two here. Then the last assault shot hits. And should do two points. Actually, no damage. Okay. So then we have a charge deck going. The first trencher. This is power 11, so it should do something. Such as leaving him with one box left. Then we have another charge deck going in, which hits. And that doesn't do any damage to him. So then the last charge attack on this demo core hits. It's coming from the sniper, of all people. Killing the Man of War. And that triggers a field promotion on the last Man of War in this entire army. So then this charge attack hits. Doing... Looks like two points? Yep, two points. Got one left. So then this charge attack hits. That kills the Man of War. And that's it. All the Man of War are dead. And the trenchers over here are out of formation, so they don't make attacks on the Widowmaker. And because Finn and the Rangers are in this zone, Signor scores one control point. So here's the end of round two. All of the Man of War, except for the Kovniks, are dead. So I only have two Jacks and half of the Widowmakers left alive. And Kozov has no focus. What am I going to do to get back into this game? Find out in Kador Turn 3. The Feet Token and Kozov's proxy base are picked up since the Feet is now gone, with Behemoth and the Juggernaut powering up and Kozov getting no focus as he's disrupted. So the Widowmakers activate first, and I have a janky assassination in mind. I pl I'm planning on having the Juggernaut move and then kill Cain with blast damage. And notice that the Widowmaker, mar the Widowmaker Grunt is was able to walk out of melee of the other two trenchers because they were out of formation and so they can't take free strikes. So now I'm having these two Widowmakers shoot at the officer of the trenchers and I'm checking line of sight here with the Widowmaker Grunt and he shoots and hits and I'm rolling for damage here since he has boxes and I do one point of damage to him. Then I have the Capitan fire and she hits. And she kills him outright. Which frees up the janky assassination which is going to have the Juggernaut run right here. So I'm placing a proxy base. That way I can place, have him placed in such a way that he is not engaging any models and I would love to get a backstrike bonus on him but because I can't turn him around he has to face the way he is at the end so he's gonna be taking four free strike running to place himself for blast damage on Kane so here's a first free strike which hits 
but does two points of damage, which we forgot to mark, by the way. So the second free strike misses, and then the third free strike hits. And this does one point of damage, which we also forget to mark. So here is the final placement for the Juggernaut, and notice the, with a blast key, he is exactly a blast damage with Kane. So this is the first shot on Behemoth hitting and doing three points to the two. Remember, we forgot to mark damage from the trench free strikes. And so now this is blast damage on Kane and does no damage. Oh boy. So we have blast damage on a trench trencher, and this kills him, and he fails his tough roll. So then here's the second shot with Behemoth, and I'm using my only focus for probable shot. And this shot hits him without a problem. I'm just picking up the die here. So this is the damage roll on the jug Juggernaut first. And that does six points of damage to his one. And then we have blast damage on Kane. This also does no damage. So I really don't know what to do here since my only attempt at winning has failed. So this Kovnik is charging to kill the Ranger and he misses. Then I have the other Kovnik running to be in the zone. That way he doesn't get any more control points. So then I have Kale Baylock activate. He's aiming and he's going to shoot at these two trenchers. The first one hits and kills him. And the second shot hits and kills him as well. So then I have Kozlov go and he is advancing to swing and kill Eris to get some retribution. So that's the rest of his movement. He's actually running. So then I have the Goblin Tinker. He is going to aim and shoot at a trencher. He hits and kills him, and he fails his tough check. So the Tinker actually killed somebody. This is the first time this actually happened for me. So then I have the War Dog go, and he runs. That way he engages Eris as well. Then I have the Battle Mechanics go, and they're charging in because I'm out of models to fight with. So this first one charges a trencher, the second one charges another trencher. Since they're Mat 5, I'm not expecting them to hit. Then this one runs, and the unit leader runs to keep everybody in formation. So this is the first charge attack. He needs 8 to hit, he misses. The second one also misses. Signar turn 3. Kane gets all six of his focus and drops both of his upkeep spells. He's looking to do a lot of shooting this turn. And Ace's mini feet token of stealth drops this turn as well. Ace and both hunters power up. And Kane allocates no focus this turn. Eris activates first, and she's running away, causing a free strike from both Kozlov and the War Dog. The War Dog goes first and hits Eris. And rolls well enough to outright kill her. Then the Gundam Age Captain Adet is being pre-measured to see how far away he'd be from Kozlov, determining his attack types. So he fires at Kozlov, shooting a flare and to snipe at him. However, his shot misses. Then Tern to Lovisi goes and she advances. She is in range of Kozlov and she fires her first shot and misses, but hits with her second shot. She is doing brutal damage and does seven points to Kozlov. Then the hunter goes, looking to shoot at Kozlov as well, and is in range and boosts to hit. He hits. And since Kozlov is now armor nine, does two points to Kozlov. Then Kane, looking to finish the deal, advances and is in range of Kozlov. He hits with his first shot and boosts damage, causing co five points to Kozlov. He's got two boxes left. Then his second shot hits. He boosts damage on this and causes a tough check on Kozlov, which he fails. Signar wins on an assassination victory. Here's the end of the game table, with Signar only having one control point and Kator zero, with Kator being shot off the table relatively fast. Thanks for watching, 
and see you in the next episode of Battles from the